when I play, I'm so concentrated that I forget I'm an asthmatic. That was beautiful. <laughs> I remember a lot of kids, it was in like fifth grade where they're writing, what are you most scared of in our neighborhood? I wrote trees because I get sick so easily here. I also wrote air pollution. They're writing gangs, violence. I get that. Then there's also the health portion. We have highways all around us. They're building a fresh direct, which is gonna be a truck hub, so a thousand more truck deliveries a day in this neighborhood. So they, they call this, has anybody ever heard the term asthma alley? That's what they call this neighborhood, asthma alley. How do you guys have asthma? Right? Saturday is about fighting against that. This is the most important concert of the year. We have more coming up, but to me, this is the most important concert we've probably ever done. can't deal with the pollution when I'm sick. Can't deal with the trucks. And I can't deal with all that stuff in the air that makes me get more sick, more asthmatic. Children who are more heavily exposed to traffic-related air pollution are at higher risk of developing asthma. It's also clear that the carbon dioxide from those same sources contributes to climate change, and that that is also harmful for children. The air pollution emitted by trucks, cars, and power plants irritates the airways and can make asthma worse. This same air pollution also fuels global warming, which promotes dangerous smog and longer, more potent pollen seasons, which can trigger asthma attacks. Forecasters are predicting this year's allergy season is going to be worse than ever, and they warn a pollen vortex is about to hit. So we're here in New York City, Midtown Manhattan. This is where we measure the pollen for New York City. This machine is known as a Burkhart trap. We use it to measure the pollen in the air. And we'll take this up to the lab, and then we'll mount it on slides, do the analysis under a microscope. And you can see just from the color that it comes from the city. It's usually of a darker color because of the soot and particles of tire rubber. One of the things that we've been able to discover is that the pollen that's in the air is highly correlated with the number of emergency room visits for people who have asthma. Pollen grains have, on the surface, they have proteins understood to cause the allergic reactions. And those proteins can become more abundant with climate change. And very likely the amount of pollen, that is the number of grains produced, is likely to increase. My mom, she gets scared. She feels always anxious. When you live in the South Bronx, you're always on the edge. If anything happens, call me, okay? Hasta te checo. Mi amiga se le murió la niña de asma porque en verano del año pasado, porque ella tenía el asma y el calor. Y ella le pegó un ataque de asma. Y cuando llamaron la ambulancia, ya ella estaba con los pulmones congestión. Ya le colapsaron los pulmones. Y ella se, me, se murió. 12 años tenía. Love you, okay? Bye. Y por eso yo me preocupo por Cynthia. One day I went to school last year. Almost half the grade, which was seventh grade, was absent. And it was really that pollen season. The experience of having an asthma attack is like having adrenaline just pumped in. You're not breathing straight, so all you hear is your pounding of your head. And I was like, I was like, I'm not breathing. I ran home. I couldn't really grasp things, I was shaking. My mom is so comforting. I have so many memories of her just saying, you're not gonna die, calm down. Because I get so anxious when I'm sick. The neighborhood where Cynthia lives is already the poorest neighborhood of New York City with a poverty rate of 43%. It's also most heavily affected by air pollution. There are so many risk factors for asthma pollution, racial, ethnic, socioeconomic risk factors. 
In fact, across the country, we see asthma hotspots because of this confluence of risk factors that kids like Cynthia are dealing with along with their asthma, which is a chronic disease. When I was struggling with my asthma, I wanted to play the clarinet. My doctor, when we brought it up with him that I wanted to join music, he was like, play it. It's going to help your lungs. Your lungs are going to expand. You're going to have so much more air capacity. Once we started playing, I couldn't play for long. And then we started playing actual pieces. We had our first ever orchestra. I was like, oh my God, I'm doing something. And as that kept going, I could go longer. In my section, I won a competition of holding the longest note, and I was the asthmatic one. So I was like, I won, I got $5, and I'm an asthmatic. That proved something. When Cynthia played music, I'm so happy because yo pienso que ella está superando su, su asma. She always made me happy when when she played music, because she says, right now she's a strong. And I saw her, she play a lot. At the end of the concert, my mom was clapping, she was smiling, and I thought, I can make her proud. It just brings you to that little happy place you have. It's like your little imaginary place. I'm scared for myself. Always we have asthma, always we have allergies. Es puro, la contaminación está demasiado fuerte aquí en el sur, en el sur del Bronx. Entonces, mi futuro es mudarme. My lungs are saying, please help. Please help. 